So in British Columbia right now, there are two tar sands pipelines proposed, as well as 21 liquefied natural gas terminals along the coast. We have tar sands coming from northern Alberta, and, uh, and liquefied natural gas comes from fracking in northeastern BC. Those projects would enable the tar sands to keep on expanding, and we know that if we are to meet any of the climate commitments that were set out at the Paris Agreement last year, the tar sands have to be stopped as soon as possible, and especially no production could be added. One of these pipelines has the same carbon footprint as many countries, and the, uh, we're really the thin wall here along the west coast that can stop them. Tar sands oil is diluted bitumen, so they basically scoop up this oily tar sand substance and they cook it with natural gas to, and then dilute it with a bunch of other processes of natural gas so that it flows. And what this does is it, it scrapes along the sides of pipelines and makes them weaker. But also, when it, when it does spill and it gets into water, it doesn't behave like regular oil. Tar sands oil actually sinks down into the water column. And there was actually a, a study that came out last year that there's no scientifically known way of cleaning it up. Once water is, sinks into the water column, it'll be there for decades. Uh, it'll show up on our beaches and in our wildlife for decades to come. And I think that's why communities along the coast are so scared that this is actually putting us at risk. Once the oil is loaded onto tankers, it has to go through a pretty treacherous route on the way out uh, into the Pacific Ocean. Currently there's about five tankers a month that come out of the existing pipeline. That would be raised seven times up to 35 tankers a month. And it's an inevitability that a spill would happen if that's the case. So really, when people are opposing this pipeline, they're, they're preventing a tar sand spill. That's what we're fighting for. Our provincial government at the moment wants to build a liquefied natural gas industry that would rival the tar sands in terms of its climate impacts. There are 21 proposed LNG terminals along the west coast in Prince Rupert, Kitimat, um, and Howe Sound near Squamish. There's one on the Fraser River, and there's one in the Saanich Inlet. Just one of these terminals would completely blow our province's climate targets. The reason for that is that it takes an immense amount of power to cool this gas down to negative 160 degrees Celsius. And that to do that, they power it with the gas themselves. So, so much of it is just given off into methane emissions. But when actually you look at the whole process of liquefying natural gas and getting it out of the ground, shipping it over to Asia, it has a bigger climate impact than if you were to just burn coal in Asia. And the Site C Dam, the power for that, the majority of the power for it, is actually meant for fracking wells in northeastern BC. And that's not only a disaster for the people that live there, the indigenous people that rely on, on those grounds for their traditional foods, it's a disaster for the climate because when you frack shale gas underground, it, a lot of that methane is released into the atmosphere and methane is actually 86 times worse than carbon dioxide in terms of warming impact. So fracking fields in northeastern British Columbia would feed into the Prince Rupert gas transmission line. It runs through Gitsan territory and down the Skeena River, which countless indigenous communities and settler communities alike rely on for the salmon. It's uh, the second largest salmon river in British Columbia. And this pipeline would run right to the terminus of it, right in the delta, where Lilu Island sits. And Lilu Island is a really magical place. It's um, one of the few places on the coast where you have the geological formations that are able to enable the salmon uh, to use it like they do. 88% of the salmon in the Skeena River rely on this one little spot. When they come in from the ocean, they hang out in the eelgrass for a little while before swimming further up the river. And then when they come out, they use it again for safety from predators before they're ready to go into the ocean. Building an LNG terminal there is just insanity. When you look at the impact of this all the way across northern British Columbia, 
the amount of communities that would be devastated if this project was to go forward uh, is immense. It's not just the local impacts to the salmon and to indigenous communities that rely on that river. The climate impacts of that project are immense. And when Justin Trudeau and his government approved it, they're basically saying that Canada has no plans to meet its climate targets under the Paris Agreement. One of the things that I found really striking when I traveled across northern British Columbia was all the people that are that are already putting these solutions into place. They're not hypotheticals anymore. We met indigenous communities who are putting solar panels on their community center. We met people who were, were growing all their own food. Uh, I mean, they, they produce almost all of the food that they eat just right there on their territory. You know, local sustainable economies are the thing that are going to power uh, our economy in the future. What we don't need is to double down on an industry that has passed its expiration date. We already have industries that are low carbon, our film and tourism, tech industries, healthcare. All of these supply a sustainable economy. BC is one of the places where geothermal potential could re really take off and provide all of our power. We're currently the only country on the Pacific Rim of Fire uh, that doesn't take advantage of its geothermal potential. Um, and the reason for that is that our government has uh, decided it has other priorities. Um, what we need are leaders that actually will will put the effort into economies that will actually survive.